All right, we're live, y'all. But before we get started, I have to show you this. This is a prime example of one of my great oh, clients good. here. <laughs> I mean, delicious. Oh, oh my God. God. That is, that is Trying to sabotage everybody. Love it. Oh my God. You love it. You guys, you guys ready? Ready. Ready. You pumped up? Yeah. 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 Alright, so today we're going to do 50 squats, 20 push-ups. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just messing around. <laughs> this is a lunch and learn. Actually, the first, the first official lunch and learn that I'm doing here at Tyco and JCI. I'm very excited to be here. First off, my name is Tyler Forbes. I'm the fitness director on site. For those of you who don't know me, I run the fitness center down in our beautiful facility that we have. And uh, I've been certified for 10 years in personal training um, down here in Boca Raton. And I absolutely love what I do. And I now get the opportunity to work in the corporate world, which is the best of, of everything, pretty much. So today's Lunch and Learn is about the five reasons why you're not seeing results. So I'm going to go over a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. So what I'm going to ask is that you would hold your questions to the end. I'll give you an opportunity. I'm going to hang out for about five, 10 minutes. So don't feel any pressure that you need to hold in these questions. I'll give you uh, the amount of time that you need when we're all done. I've also given you a piece of paper and a pen so that uh, you can show me how down to business you are and take notes. And, and hopefully um, you take something from this today. I hope you have a new set of goals set in mind and a new drive to get those, those results that you deserve. So without further ado, we're going to get started. So here we are. Workout for results Our top five reasons why you're not seeing results. Right? So the number one reason is because we're expecting too much too soon. So I see this all the time in the gym. People will come in gung-ho and they're all excited. They're giving everything they got and they're going strong for a week and then they get discouraged. Well, in all reality, thinking that you're going to get uh, results in a week is just it's not going to happen. So what I have is the first point is the, uh, the worthy 30. So what that is, is that's the first 30 days, which is, to be honest with you, one of the most crucial days of your training program and your new fitness lifestyle that you're going to start. So in those 30 days, what I challenge all of my clients to do is to start off with five days a week just doing cardio. And the reason why I do that is because, number one, your biggest hurdle is going to be that cardiovascular and that endurance. So sometimes when I tell people that, they're like, wait, I can't use weights. There's a time for that. First things first, let's get you in. I want to build consistency in you because that's also moving forward. That's going to be a, a big point. So our next point is the false notion. So what the false notion is, is pretty much broadcasted through social media. And as a personal trainer, I get very upset when I see these false advertising about you know, two-week transformations. You know, totally transform your body in 30 days. To be honest with you, I'm telling you, that's incorrect. It's false, number one. Number two, it's not safe. And number three, it's not long lasting. What I want for you guys is to get an understanding that it's gonna take every bit of, my next point, the timeline, 60 to 90 days. That's what you're looking at. So the first 30 days, your body is just getting started with what you're doing. Uh, it's building the endurance, building the, the uh, consistency, and it takes those 30 days just to know what's going on. So in order for you to start seeing results, because that's what people want to know, when am I going to start seeing it? And you're looking at 60 to 90 days, and that depends from person to person, genetics, male, female, and everything else that you're putting into it, which we'll get into further in, in the seminar. Um, but this brings me to my second point. And I know this might be kind of a rude awakening for a lot of us, but maybe you're just not really into it. And that's OK. We have plenty of people that aren't into it, but they're trying to do the, they, uh, everything they can, which is a good thing, but it's a bad thing, because what you're going to do is you're going to continually spin your wheels 
and you're not going to get anywhere. And I know every single person that's in here is wanting results or else you wouldn't be sitting in here. So the first point of you're not really into it is you need to get a plan. Okay? The plan is going to help you uh, focus in what you're going to be doing. So if you're coming down to the gym and you're kind of like, oh, okay, I guess I'll work this out today, or oh, I guess I'll work out that. What will happen is you'll probably be working out the same muscle groups every day, which is unsafe because you're constantly damaging the same muscle fibers. You're not giving it time to heal. So that plan is not only going to give you focus, but it's also going to give you that layout of what you need to do. Okay, so that's number one here. Number two is listening to music. And I don't know about you, but I get pumped up when I hear my favorite music. Everybody has their different styles, but music can touch us in, in many different ways. And so what I suggest for you guys to do, I see, I see a lot of people come in the gym and they don't have music. And I, I think to myself, how are they getting pumped up? Because I know it's not from CNN or Fox. I know that's not, I know that's not pumping you up. I ain't surprised. So, <laughs> one way or another. But I'm not saying that you have to do this, but this is something that helps me and that I suggest my clients to do. Get pumped up, get your music in, get dialed, get, get dialed in. And that brings me to my next point, which is all about the routine. You need to get a pre-workout routine. And what I mean by that is, when I'm going to the gym, I got my gym bag, I got my gym shoes, I got my gym clothes, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm driving to the gym, I'm walking up, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do, I'm getting my plan out, okay? So I know I'm doing chest and arms today. And I know exactly what I'm doing, and when I'm doing it, I got my music in. So you wanna get together with yourself and find out what's the best routine for me, my pre-workout routine, all right? So our third bullet point, which is very, very important, is maybe your weights aren't heavy enough, all right? So this is a big, big thing, mainly for me, female, and I'm not trying to single out, but guys, we know that we're macho, and we wanna lift those weights and everything like that, but there's a big, number one point, the misconception, and this, this is huge in the gym, and I've been seeing this throughout, every, almost every day for the past 10 years, the, the misconception is that if females use heavy weight, that they're gonna get big and bulky like a man. And that's not true. What we're finding more and more through education and through the anatomy of the human body is that in all reality, it's, it's the opposite. Women need to use weights because, number one, you produce more of the hormone estrogen than men do. Testosterone is the muscle building hormone. So when you have estrogen, which is the kryptonite to building muscle, therefore you gotta work harder and you gotta lift that heavier weight, okay? So our next point is gonna be find your rep range. And that's something also that I think a lot of people get confused with. So for instance, here's an example. There's three different rep ranges that you can do. You have your six to nine rep range, you have your 12 to 15, and your 18 to 25. And there's a purpose for all three of those. So the first one's gonna give you your power and your strength. The second one is a medium range, so that's a little bit of power and a little bit of endurance. The last, sec the last section is all endurance, okay? You need to be trained all different forms of those muscle fibers. Okay, that being said, what you need to do is you need to pick a weight. Let's say if you're on chest press, right? And you go 30 pounds. A lot of times what people do is they say, oh, well, Tyler told me or my trainer told me to do 12 to 15. So they'll get in there, you'll put 30 pounds on, and you'll go, okay, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wait a second, then the next set. What you need to do is, what I suggest, when I'm working with somebody new, I don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are. So I tell them, listen, let's start, let's start with 30 and see what you can do. If you're doing 30 reps, as much as you can do, that's telling you that that's too light, you need to up the weight. So that rep range, no matter what it is, 6 to 9, 12 to 15, 18 to 25, that 18 to 25 is your range. So really, you need to be, uh, your last rep needs to be 22, 23. And then if you're lucky, you get to 25. And what you find is maybe a week or two later, or a month later, all of a sudden you're like, hey, I can go up five pounds. That's what we're looking to do. You never want to stay with the same weight and just kind of finish 12 to 5 because a trainer or an article in a magazine told you to do 12 to 15 or 18 to 25. So here's another one. Let's not be afraid to get sweaty. I see, I see a lot of times, and again, I'm not trying to be offensive, but a lot of people say, well, I like this class because I don't sweat. Well, here's the reality. If you're not sweating, you ain't burning calories. That's the bottom line. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what type of person you are, what type of genetics you have, you need to sweat. Don't be afraid to sweat. Number one, sweating is the number one way for your body to detoxify, especially the surface detoxification, right? So that's another perk right there of sweating. But sweating means you're getting your heart rate up, you're boosting your metabolism, which is also gonna carry through throughout the day, all right? So let's not be afraid to get sweaty. 
Our next slide is you stop when it hurts. And as you can see, I'm getting uh, to the more and more uh, important slides as we go on because now we're getting to, down to the nitty gritty. Because to be honest with you, the human body doesn't want to hurt. It just our natural, the, the way we're made up is we don't want, we don't like pain. We don't want, we want everything to be comfortable in our own little world, and that's how we are. Okay, but we're never going to get there if you don't go past the hurt. Now I say that very softly because there are different types of pain. Okay? So you'll sometimes, not so much anymore, but back in the day they would say, you know, um, you know, don't, no pain, no gain, right? You hear people say that. Not, in all reality, I'm not big on that as a trainer because that's not, that's not true. There are some pains that you don't want, all right? So you don't want back pain or bone pain. There's a difference between bone pain and muscle pain, all right? So our next one is achieve the tear. So what is the tear? Well, when you're working out, what you're doing is you're tearing muscle fiber. That's the whole purpose of why you're working out. If you're not tearing the muscle fiber, you're not getting stronger, and you're not gonna build that lean muscle. Here's a fact for you. One pound of muscle burns 50 calories. So let's say in a training program, in 30 days, you put on three pounds of muscle. There's 150 calories that you're burning every day doing nothing. So think about that, three, six, nine. You're losing body fat, you're putting on lean muscle, you look better, you feel better, and you're revving your metabolism's up. So that's what we need to do. We need to tear the muscle. Our next one is pass the burn. So the burn is after you've torn the muscle, you start to feel that burn, and that's what we're looking for. That burn is lactic acid being released to the muscle fibers that are being torn. So what I tell my client is, is when they're in that machine, oh, it burns, and they stop. I say, look, I didn't tell you to stop. You gotta go past that burn. You gotta push yourself to the limit. Because I'll tell you what, our muscles are very smart. Our bodies are smart. We react, we modify to our surroundings, so our muscles will get used to certain workouts. So we constantly need to be burning and tearing muscle fiber. Our third one on this is the DOS, delayed onset soreness. What I do, it's called delayed onset soreness. So what DOS is, is that is soreness that's coming a day to 24 to 48 hours later. What I've been doing lately with my clients is every time I see them when they come in and say, how you doing, how you feeling, let's get pumped up, are you sore? Were you sore from what we did last time? Because if you're not, guess what? As hard as you worked last time, we're gonna work even harder next time because literally you need to be sore every week. I wouldn't say every workout, because we have good and bad workouts, everybody does. But you're gonna wanna be sore on a weekly basis. You're gonna wanna, let's say if you work upper body on, on Monday, Wednesday, you should be like, oh, okay, I feel my arms, I feel my back, one of those muscle groups that you work needs to be a little toasted, okay? That's gonna be a sign that you're getting results. Soreness, muscle soreness is a good thing. So, here's our fifth and final reason why you're not seeing results. And Todd was a perfect example of, look at him over there texting during our seminar. <laughs> texting, he's got donuts, pizza, a regular cook at that. Um, the number one reason why we're not seeing results <laughs> Unfortunately, it's because you haven't cleaned up your diet. And so I'm going to take it even one step. Apple. He's got an apple, sorry. I'm going to share with you the 80-20 rule. So the 80-20 rule is probably one of the most awakening rules that we can find out is that 80% of you seeing your body change is going to be nutrition. And as a trainer, I'm not trying to stick my foot in my mouth and take business away from me and, and, and my, and my uh, corporation, but it's the reality. If your diet's not right, you're not gonna see results. And I tell my clients that. Don't think that you're just gonna come in two days a week with me and get where you need to get to, because it ain't gonna happen. That's false advertisement on my point, I'm not gonna do it. That's why when I do training, I have a nutritional plan, an organization, and a fitness plan for my clients. So 80% of you seeing results is gonna come fr from nutrition, 20 is from resistance. Now that being said, you can't just do all diet and no resistance because you're gonna have that loose feeling. You won't get all the benefits of balance, strengthening tendons and ligaments, strengthening bones, all right? So there's a lot of benefits that come from resistance too. But in all reality, what this means is that you want a fair share of everything. Don't think that you're gonna come in the gym seven days a week and be eating like crap and see results because it's not gonna happen. Our final point is that this is gonna to be to be continued because my next Lunch and Learn is gonna be about nutrition, specifically about how you can use nutrition to get the best results for you. 
So as I close, I want to thank you guys for taking your time to come down here, taking your lunch on this Friday afternoon to spend it with me. I'm honored to be in this building and be working with you guys for over four years. It's been a blast, and I can't wait for the future for all of us. And so those of you who have questions, stick around. I'm going to be here as long as you need me to be here. Those of you who need to, to get back to work, as we are in a workplace, then feel free to. So thank you for coming down. Have a great day. Have a good weekend.